Welcome back to the Veneta Workshop. Today, it's rebuild day. We finally got to the stage after lots of measuring and checking and prepping and scraping gaskets, etc. We're at the stage now to put all this thing back together. We're going to start with the vertical head, uh, which was fine when we took it all apart. Put the piston in the cylinder, we'll put the cylinder onto the, the block, we'll button it all down. Then we'll move to the horizontal head. We'll have to put new rings in this piston because this piston and uh, cylinder are all brand new. We'll get that on, we'll get the oil pump fitted, we'll get the side casings back on. Then we'll be ready to put it back in the bike. Can we do it this week? Mm, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. So, first things first, let's get the piston in the cylinder. So, because Ducati engines are designed in such a way where the cylinders are separate, you can actually put the pistons in the cylinder and put the cylinder back onto the block. Whereas if you were doing like a Japanese four-stroke, um, generally the head is in one piece and the block's in one piece. You'd have to put the pistons up through from underneath and then connect them to the conrod. So we do have a bit of advantage, but it does mean you're putting in the pistons in backwards. With the three rings, as we discussed earlier, they, they compress into the cylinder and you can see that there's quite a lot of stick out for them. So it's, it's a lot of compression that has to happen. You can do this with your fingers. I've seen it done. It's not easy. It's got a lot of risks. So use a piston ring compression tool, which just makes your life a whole lot easier. So this slides over the piston. You then ratchet up the, the tool, put it over the head, and we'll knock it in like that. Sounds simple. Will we get it first time? I don't know. We'll see. I'm also going to get a lubrication, a little bit of lubrication on these rings as well, so at least there's something in there when they're in the block. So they're not because obviously we've had them all out and everything's been clean, so it'd be nice to have a little bit of lube there. Let's start with the lube first. This oil that I'm using here is actually a lubricant additive uh, from Zato, I think it is. Um, it's got a really good lubrication property, so you're supposed to add a certain amount to your, your, your sump. But for rebuilding engines, because it's so thick and it does have such a good lubricating property, it's great for stuff like this. So we're just going to put a little bit on here, prep all the rings. Good enough. And we'll just work it around. It's quite thick. That's a good thing. I just want to make sure that the rings have got a bit of friction with the oil so they don't move around as much. Because once all this oil's worked in, we're going to stagger all these rim rings so they all are opposed to each other. So there's no one straight path where the gap is of, of the rings. So, there's the split for the oil ring there. So that's there. Let's put, yeah, put the second ring in about, make a triangle kind of shape here. And we'll do the third ring around this side. This oil does make it really, really thick, which is good. So, top ring splits here, second ring splits, or is it here? And our oil scraper ring splits here, so they're all nicely separated. Okay. Mmm. It's never going to be a clean job. So we'll slide over our, maybe open up, give us half a chance if it's open. Slide over our piston and compression. And then we're just gonna tighten it up slowly.
just like that. And then you've got a piston in. You can see it's flush with the bottom. We're going to take our cylinder. And it's basically going to sit over here. And we're going to throw it in. Let's throw it in. Gently knock it in. So if we squeeze it so we've got a bit sticking out. And that way it's located nicely in the cylinder. Just check how tight this is. Yeah, it's tight. If you have it too tight, when you push the piston down, it just clamps in and won't go. If you have it too loose, the piston ring will split, uh, spit out, and you got a problem. So, everything's down there. And there we go. One piston in the cylinder. Fairly painless, second attempt, but it moves up and down there pretty easily, so we know the rings are nice and snug in the bore. Next job. Now we want to push this piston out <clears throat> just enough so we can get to the wrist pin or the gudgeon pin, whatever you want to call it. but not enough so we push out the oil scraper ring. So from there, we can then oh, slide the pin out. But because I've greased everything, it's all a bit slidey. <laughs> okay. And it really is so close to the bottom of the oil scraper ring when you push it out like that. Very, very close. Whoa. Okay. You see, if I was a good YouTuber, I'd have all the tools at hand, but no. There we go. So now, the idea is that we'll push the <coughs> con rod of the top cylinder up to TDC. We'll slide the wrist pin over the top of it. We'll push the pin in without the cylinder sliding over the piston rings. Uh, we'll then put the tiny, where is it? A tiny uh, retaining ring for the cudgeon pin back in again and that will be golden but before we do that we need to fit the base gaskets which means we need to prep the bottom side of it put a bit of sealant on there just for safety's sake for shits and giggles and then we'll put a bit on top and then we'll do this so we're almost there
Beautiful. Okay. Let's get a new head gasket on here. It's kind of annoying that these gaskets are only going to be for, on for a short amount of time before we have to take it off again. Aha! One hole is bigger than the other hole. Sorry, one hole is bigger than the other hole to go through the, the locating bush here. So there is really only one way you can put this gasket on. The way these gaskets work, I should probably explain that. There's lots of little layers of thin metal. So when you compress the gaskets together, that would, that's what makes your seal. Head gaskets do not need uh, any help with the gaskets. I'm just looking with the holes for the oil jacket. Yeah, so you've got your feed and return here. These are just small pressure holes. Alrighty. Pick a cylinder head. Get the right one. Actually make sure. Also, a locating pin on the gasket here. There we go. And that is our head back on again. Before tightening this head down, we need to consult the manual to find out what the torque settings are. RTFM. You'll also see in the manual that it mentions grease on the threads and the base of the nut. It doesn't actually say exactly, but that's where you're supposed to put it. When you torque a bolt down, I mean, the, the whole idea is you're, you're putting a stretch onto the stud itself, which gives you pretension, especially on a cylinder head, gives you enough pretension to hold the seal down and also for the nut not to slacken off. Generally, a uh, stud like this is probably going to be 60-70% of yield of the actual metal itself. If you were going to tension the bolt, you would, you would always have the exact amount because you know what that pretension is. Because you have a torque effect, you're having to overcome the frictional forces on the base of the nut and in the thread itself. Example would be if you've got a galvanized, sheridized um, bolt, for example. That's got a very, very high friction coefficient, as opposed to something like a PTFE coating, which is a very low coefficient. The stretch required for that bolt would be identical, but the torque setting required would be dramatically different, because you'd have to torque so much more to overcome the frictional forces to then get the stretch on the nut or the stud. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of grease on the thread and round about and when we put the nut down we'll put it on the base as well it doesn't need to be too much but that's what the manual says we need to do and, but that will ensure we've got the correct um, torque settings Okay, now we're just gonna have just a little tension by hand before we start the first torque setting. Okay. Now, Ducati will sell you a special tool to get into this tiny area here so you can torque the bolt, or the nut rather. Um, I've never priced it, but I know it's going to be horrendously expensive because it's Ducati. Or you can make your own. This is made out of a spanner cut and re-welded and buffed up with an old socket at the end of it. And it works just as well. And where the point is, exactly the same point as where the original nut is, so your torque setting should be identical. Let's find out what the first torque setting is. 
consulting the manual, it says for the first initial bite, 15 newton meters. So, pulled out my smallest torque wrench for the job. 15 it will be. I'm actually just going to start squeezing these down gently and in order until we get to our first 15. Fifteen on that one. And that one. And that. And fifteen in that one. Next setting. Next one is a thirty. So we use the bigger torque wrench for that. Start in this one. Four. Of course, I hit the grease spot. Damn it. That one's a bit close. Final torque is forty eight Newton meters. Beautiful. 55 Newton meters isn't that much, but through a little bendy tool like this, it's enough. Okay. One thing we should have done before we even started this is cover the inlet and the exhaust ports. Because the last thing we want to do is take all this off again because we dropped something in it. That wouldn't be much fun. I may or may not have done that before. Not in this engine anyway. So, top head is done. We're all ready to go. I think it's probably a good place to stop here. Um, this has turned into quite a long, lengthy video. The next one, I'm not going to repeat and make you watch the whole thing again with the front cylinder, but we will go through fitting the new piston rings. We'll get this on. We've still got the side covers to go. We've still got the oil pump to fit. Lots of ancillary parts in this engine that we need to refit uh, before we need to put it in the engine. But we're making good progress. Uh, thanks for your watching, thanks for your attention, thanks for your comments and your, your interest in this little project of ours. Um, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, hit the like button, do the whole subscribe thing, and we'll see you in the next video. Magically, my spanner has disappeared. It really has. <laughs>